Does anybody else have a testimony or they haven't got pending to hand?
talk a little bit today about corporate worship, but we're, we're going to finish up the uh, the Gospels, and we're going to go in, in Exodus chapter 28. I think we better pray, because in my mind, I know what I want to say, but when I put it down on paper, it didn't come out the way I thought it was going to come out, so we shall ask the Lord to bless. Let's stand this morning. Father God, we thank you for the privilege of being here today, and we thank you for your testimonies, and we do thank you for touching this little guy, and we thank you for taking away the cough, and we pray, God, that, that you would just cover him in your blood and, Lord, that you would keep him healthy. And, Father, I pray that throughout this school year, Lord, that you would protect him as he's out there uh, and around other kids or whatever, Lord, that you would just keep your hand on him. I thank you, Lord, for touching people who are sick. And I pray, God, if there's anyone here that does not feel good, Lord, that you would just reach down and strengthen them up. For the ones who are home, Lord, that cannot come out, Lord, uh, I pray that you would just minister to them. The one who's in the hospital, Lord, I pray that you would touch their bodies. And, Father, I ask that you are a healing God, and I just pray that we would be so thankful that we would be careful to give you the praise and glory for not only our healing, but for every need that you, that you meet. I thank you, Lord, for being able to open your word and to study it and, Lord, to apply it. And I thank you because you care enough to let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us and through, our, through our lives and all that we have to do. And, Father, I thank you for these ones who are ill today. And, Father, I pray that you would just minister it to each and every one. Let the Holy Spirit just go from heart to heart and minister to every need that's, that's present in this room. And, Lord, that you would help me with this lesson, and, Lord, that you would uh, allow me to say what you would have me to say and not what I want to say. I ask, Lord, that you would just be with us now, and we ask these things in your name. And everyone said, amen. We are in the, the last portion of the, of the garment, a and I, I, don't, I probably have not done it justly because there's just so much to it, but the garment represents everything that Jesus is. If you look into it, and it, it, the whole thing is Jesus' righteousness and how we are under his righteousness. This is the last part. If you got your paper, it's, it's down where the uh, sun gets the garment. Verse 40 in chapter 28. It says, And for Aaron's son thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for their girdle and bonnet shall they make for them glory and for beauty. For glory and for beauty. I kind of looked that up and, and kind of know what glory and beauty. Glory said it brought dignity to them. And beauty, well, it kind of qualified them. You know, I've heard Chris say that that he that God brings up, but he makes you qualified. You don't have to qualify to work for God because he qualifies you. And this is what he was doing with the priests to make them holy. And they had a white robe, pure white. But it's not like the high priest robe. They don't have the ephod. They don't have the breastplate. They don't have the robe. And they don't have the sash that, that uh, goes around the leg. They don't have that because they are not the high priest. They are what, pe what the book calls inferior people. It's like laymen. But they were ministers. And every time they had to minister, they had to wear this garment. Verse 41. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron, thy brother, 
and the son of him and shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office, that you would be anointed. We all like to be anointed, right? If you're anointed, you're honored. God, you, you anoint with oil. You anoint uh, for healing. You're anointed for uh, lots of things. And we went for this before, but there's different spices for different anointments. Then it says consecrate them to dedicate them for the work to cause them to be able to do what God. And then it says to sanctify them, to set them apart, away from others, but to do other things, but to show Christ. Let me tell you, this is what he does to Christians. When you are called, when you are called, when you're chosen, God anoints you to be his child he wants you to be consecrated where you will dedicate yourself to him and sanctify that, that you separate yourself from the things that would pull you down, that you would honor him, give him glory. Then it goes on and it says, And thou shalt make him linen breeches to cover his nakedness, from the loins even unto the thighs thou shalt reach. That is the whole outfit of them. It is to show that God's right or Christ's righteousness covers everything. Covers everything. It says to cover their nakedness. Now, some said that it was that so that they would not worship the way the pagans did. But it wanted us to have divine worship. And when I thought of that, when you think of divine worship, what would you think of? Do you have any idea what you might think of? I'll tell you what it popped into my mind. Communion. Communion. Turn to First Corinthians chapter 11, I think it is. I think that's what I want. I don't know if that's it or not. Maybe it's just there. I'm sorry. 1126. This is great. I mean, I always get Second Corinthians. I don't know why I think two comes before three. Second Corinthians eleven twenty six. It says, "For as often as you eat this bread, we are talking about communion. We all know what communion is, do we not? It says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you shall do show the Lord's death till he comes." The garment that the priest, the high priest, and also the sons of the priest, that had they had to wear every part of it. Everything. If they did not wear the whole outfit, God would not receive them. As I was thinking about this, and the reason one of them said is because they want the necessity of purity of worship. When God gave them this, and it was God's design, it wasn't Moses, he had a purpose for everything. God has a purpose in our life. Now, we don't have to wear the garment that we have to wear what it represents. And what does it represent? Christ righteousness. We don't have to die. We don't have to get all dressed up. We don't have to wear certain clothes. 
But what we do have to do, we have to have the purity of worship. We have to have everything we need in order to worship God. If you have sin in your life, God says, or the word says, you, I will not hear your prayer. Now you say, what does that have to do with communion? It says, for as often as you do this, and I sat at home and I began to think, some churches, and we was, I was in Foursquare, we did it well, the first Sunday of every month. Another church that I had ministered to when I was in school, they did it every Sunday. I've, always, I've seen, been in churches where they set up a thing over on that side and a piece over this side where you could come and take communion whenever you want to. So God says, for, or they wrote, the word says, for as often as you come. We take it, sometimes it's Christmas, sometimes it's Easter, sometimes it's just because the Lord has moved on Chris to do it. But every time we do it, we must realize why we are doing it. And I have heard preachers, and I have probably have said it myself, you take communion, and the only thing that we require of you is that for you to be saved. And as I was thinking about this, it was like what God just, it's not what we think. It's what God thinks. And God had put these high priests and the priests, the sons, that they had to wear this garment in order to come into the presence and to minister Christ. Like I said, we don't wear this garment, but we should have every aspect of this garment in our life. We should be able to come and worship God because and give him glory. We should come and worship God because we love him. We offer up communion, and it goes on, let's go on and see it. When, wherefore, who shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilt of the body and the blood of the Lord. And you say, unworthy. Dishonor God. How do you do that? By approaching him and having something in your life that should not be. When the priest came in, not, not the high priest, but when the priest came in the holy place, they had to be ready to serve. That means that they had the whole garment on. We put on the garment of what? Praise. Yet when we come, when we praise, is it a purity praise? It's, okay, we're going to praise God. And for square, I used to think I was in school because they'd say, we lift our hands and praise the Lord. We lift our hands and praise the Lord. We lift our hands and praise the Lord. I only lift my hands when I told to. Is that how you praise God? He said, if you take this unworthily, this is what I'm saying. We don't know what people are. Just because you're saved, there's other things in your life that may cause you to be unworthy. Oh, Laura. Listen, this was God's thought. I didn't think about this. If you do it unworthily, it's something in your life that is bothering you. People, I've seen people say, Come on up and have communion. Whether, whether or not, if they're sitting by, come on. One day I was sitting back there and James was sitting back here. And we were going to take communion. And everybody got up and started leaning like we do. But James stayed still. And I walked over to him and I said, James? Aren't you going to take communion? And he said, no. I said, why not? He said, because I've had a really bad week and I'm not where I should be. 
I said, well, all you have to do is ask the Lord to forgive you. All you have to do, why? Because, listen, it says, where does it say, for examine yourself? 28, but let a man examine himself. That's why I say that we can praise, we can take communion unworthily. We have to examine ourselves. Are we in a place? Are we fully clothed to praise God? Are we fully clothed to come into his presence? The priest always had to sacrifice and cleanse himself before he went in to see God. And it says we can come as we are because our high priest is Jesus. But that was your praise. It's up to you. Are you in a place where you can give perfect praise, pure, wholeheartedly thinking? When you are there taking communion, what do you think of? How do you receive it? We have a way. We line up, they give it to us, or we get it. Stand back here, they read the scriptures. We take it, we give it a few times to examine yourself because it said, you know, you have to be worthy. You have to know what is right and what is wrong. I can't tell you what is right and what's wrong in your life. I cannot tell you what is bothering you that day. But I can tell you this. It's time for you to think about it. And if you've got something bothering you, you need to say, Lord, forgive me. Help me to get over this. How can you come and praise him for all that he does if you're harboring something in your heart? Praise the Lord. He wants pure, holy praise. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be holier than thou. You're not going to be. And he knows us. This is why he's making a way for us to be able to serve him and to, to praise him for what he does. And this garment shows us every step. It shows Christ as our high priest. It shows him as our intercessor. He shows us as our mediator. He shows us as his sacrifice. He shows, that shows us everything that God is. And this shows us everything that he will do. So when you start praising God, you need to think about your life. And I've been thinking about my life. I've been thinking about my prayers. So, and, and I know that none of you are like this. It's just me. I know this. Yes. And I want to tell you about my praise. And you can blame that little guy right back there. Because when it's time to praise God... I want to praise God, but my eyes is on that little guy. Yeah. Let's praise God. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Now, I know I'm the only one that does that. Would you call that pure worship? Mm -mm. And, and, and the Lord just... Caused me to think about this, how we hurry through worship service, how we don't give time for God, and, and God wants that. And, and if it takes us a few minutes, like I was telling you at one time, I sat back there with my arm closed, and everybody else was having a, a good time, and I was just sitting back there saying, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, don't, I don't feel like that. So I said, Lord, if you want me to praise, okay, I'll praise that when I started yielding myself to him, it began to come. But when we praise God in church, there are so many things that occupy our mind. There's so many distractions. And, and, and 
I sat back there and I, I and I try. I, at one time, I become like Brother Hill. Brother Hill used to preach with his eyes closed. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. I guess he don't preach with his eyes, so he could do it. But things got so bad, and everything was drawing my attention away. And this is what happens. People uh, draws our attentions away. And what we need to realize, that God wants us, our pure, holy praise. Not without all this other added distractions. And I had to start closing my eyes because I was paying attention what was going on. And, oh, yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. Now, I know you people don't do that. I wished I was as good as you. Exactly. 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 Yeah, I could sit right down here in front, too. Yeah, you know. I could. That's why you sit there. Yeah. Yeah. I sit back there because I've always sat in the back. Always. Habit. I don't like to change. But you see the purpose? You see the purpose? You see what I'm getting at when it says they want divine? It's a necessity to have purity in your praise. It's a necessity that when you come to God, you need to be in focus with him. Now, this is not only in communion, but this is every time you come in the presence of God. When you sit down to pray, or if you come up here to pray, or whatever, your mind should be on God. And the first thing you do, it says, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You need to give him the praise because hallowed is his name. You need to sit down and you need to tell him, God, I love you. I want to praise you. And Lord, I want to be. And so many times I say, Lord, I am not fit. I, I have problems and I ask you to forgive me. The first thing I do when I pray, I ask for forgiveness. Did I have a sin? I don't know. But I want to be where I can see God. I want to go where I can be. I want to have that robe of righteousness on me. I want to be pure in worshiping my God because what he did for me. I'm telling you, I know I didn't do this justice, but I'm telling you, I got blessed every time I opened this door, every time and studied the whole thing. There's more to it, and I didn't just get it over the top. But when it comes to divine worship, God divines. He, he demands that we come in holiness, that we come where we can be in his presence. And if you are not right, I'm not saying if you're not saved. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if there's something in your life, you need to get rid of it. Let me tell you, God just didn't think this thing up. He knew about it. He put it for a purpose, and that purpose was for us. Everything was for us. And you know why I know that he knows that we have this? Because if he expected everyone to come in and take communion and, and be, know what it knows, we all know what it means, represents, we know that. But he says, examine yourself. Because he knows we're not perfect. Turn with me. Let me see if I can get this right. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen. Verse five. It says, Examine yourself whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know when know ye not your own self. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be 
reprobate. He said, you need to know, listen, put yourself, and I got this in the paraphrase, put yourself to the test and judge yourself to find out whether you are living in faith. So many of us, we say we live in faith, but so many of us goes to the help. So many of us, we go to people, we go where we know we can get help all the time. Again, me. You know, I have to use myself as, a, as an example because I don't know anybody as worse as I am. But anyway, I keep on saying, I'm not going to make it to heaven because I have no compassion. And I have to pray about this. In fact, I prayed about it this morning. I have to pray about it because when I see people who are, and I know the Bible says that the poor will always be with us. It says that. But when I see people who are out on the corner and holding a sign that says we'll work for food. And there are blocks from Walmart that says help wanted. I don't have compassion. I don't want them, I don't want them to work for me for food. I want them to go in there and get, but you see the government has come around where it made it so easy that people have lost respect. I'm saying if you need help, you go get help. But I'm going to tell you one thing. My help comes from God. When I was, how many talks to your TV? I talk to my TV on time. <laughs> it never answers, but I always talk to it. And they was always wanting money, wanting money, wanting money, wanting money, wanting money. I said, why don't you ask God to give you that money? Why don't you go and ask the Lord? Why? Because it's easier to expect other people to give it. Listen, God wants to meet your needs. He also wants you to live by faith. And it says that if you live by faith... If you have faith in you, to turn to John 15. I think that's what I want. Could be mistaken. Don't have my notes in the right place. Maybe it, I need it where it says, if you walk in the faith, if you live in the faith, then the faith you know, dwells within you. And I'm not at the right place in my notes, so I can't tell you. I always forget these things when I come in here. What's that? Well, it's faith. It says you, if you live, you can live by faith. If you live by faith, if you live by the Spirit, let, it's Galatians 5.25. If you live in the Spirit, let, let's also walk in the spirit. And if you live in the spirit, and if you walk in the spirit, if you are covered with God's with Christ's righteousness, if you have the garment of we put on the garment of praise, if we have that, then David said, I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen anybody begging for bread. Listen, God wants us to rely upon him. And when we rely upon him and he blesses us, then we should give him what? Praise. And we should give him pure praise. We should come in his presence with thanksgiving and understanding that what we do will not bring dishonor to God. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. I think I touched on this a little bit last week. But ye are a chosen, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar person, people. That ye should show therefore, you know, that you should show forth 
the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. If we are a chosen generation, the breastplate on the that the holy that the the high priest wore were of the twelve tribes of Israel. They were his chosen people. Says, if ye be chosen, and he says, I choose you. You have not chosen me. We are his chosen people. We have been adopted in, but we are his child. We are a part of it. It says, but if ye a chosen a generation, a royal priesthood, that means that our Jesus, our Lord, is our high priest, and we are a part of him. We are a part of him. A holy nation, a peculiar person. Let people listen. You may be odd, but you're all different. You may all have one thing in common, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But how you serve him is all different. You serve him different than I do. I serve him different than you do. You, you depend on him like you depend on him. I depend on him all the time. I say, Lord, it's just me and you, and I can't do it, so guess who has to? Let me tell you, if you live by faith, the faith dwells in you. The spirit, I mean, if you live by spirit, the, it dwells within you. And then the glory and the, and the praise that he so desires is there. Remember the little tassels at the end of the thing? It was the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit. We glorify him when we live in the Spirit. We show them that we can. A peculiar person, that ye should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness. Let me tell you, if God did not do anything but pull you out of sin, we should praise him every day. If he does not do another thing for you, we should praise him for that. We should come to an understanding that when we take communion, it's that's why we take it. It's because what he has done for us, what he has done for me. Billy Graham said he did not die for all. Christ did not die for all. He died for each. If it was just me, he would have died for me. If it was just you, he would have died for you. And it says that we should praise him because of what he brings us out of it. But we are so distracted, just like Dan says, we are so distracted by what is happening around us. And let me tell you, we can give the Satan credit if you want to, but the credit belongs to you. You don't have to look. You don't have to be distracted. You don't have to do what you're doing. You have to have your mind upon the Lord. In order to give him pure praise, your eyes is upon the Lord for what he has done. If he has done nothing else, if he has done nothing else, verse 5 in the same chapter, it says, Ye also, as living stones, and build upon the Spirit's house, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit. Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the foundation. The sacrifice. We don't sacrifice birds and lambs and all this. But we do give a sacrifice of praise. Did the bell ring? All right. Both round wings. All right. I have a lot more, but I'll quit here. 
Father, I thank you for this, and Lord, I pray that we would understand the purity of the, the praise that you would have us to desire. I ask, Lord, now that you would go with us in our separate uh, service, Lord, that you would bless everything that's said and done, for we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm sorry about running over. I did not hear.